Hey folks, Robbie Payne with Chrome Unbox coming at you today with a full review of the HP Chromebook 13 G1. Now this thing comes in packing the spec sheets. It's got an all aluminum or mostly aluminum build. A lot of things that seem impressive on the outside and to be honest, it's impressive on the inside too, but it's not without its flaws. So let's get into this review and see how this guy stacks up. So the HP Chromebook 13 does lots of things right. Uh, out of the gate, the aluminum build is, is gorgeous. Uh, the overall design, uh, it feels inspired uh, and not a rehash of something we've seen before. Uh, the quality of the build, the way things are put together, overall for the most part feels really good. The screen is excellent, typing is really great on it. So there's really not a lot for me to fault in this device. Uh, and so around the office here, we've, we've really enjoyed having this thing around. Um, and so I just want to talk through uh, and, and kind of go around the device so that you can kind of see um, some of the things and I can tell you about a few of the quirks um, that I see in the device. And, and we can all kind of uh, make our decisions based on those things. And hopefully this review helps you out um, if you're considering purchasing the HP Chromebook 13 G1 around the top lid we've got this nice brushed aluminum does not feel cheap it feels really really good actually around the back side we have this beautiful chromed out hinge uh, it looks a little bit like the pixels hinge um, and and gives a satisfying click kind of and I might be able to get this on here whenever you close it um, and it actually kind of feels like it, it solidly closes the device and so you don't have the, the lid flopping around on you so that's a very nice touch uh, around the sides, uh, we see the uh, two USB Type-C ports and then one USB 3.0 port, combo headphone microphone jack. Nothing across the front, save this really cool bevel um, uh, that, that's kind of beveled inwards that way. It just gives it a nice, neat look. Uh, again, little things in this device that, that kind of set it apart. Uh, we've got the SD card slot over here uh, that uh, is micro, so keep that in mind if you have um, uh, storage. Um, you're going to have to switch to micro SD if you are using a full size. Um, and that's pretty much it around the top. The bottom, um, some people have commented about having a plastic bottom. This didn't bother me at all. Um, a, because you don't really see the bottom that often. B, because the, the soft touch plastic actually gives it a little bit of grip when you're holding it. And because it is so thin um, and, and it comes in at such a thin form factor, it actually gives it a nice bit of grip when you're carrying it around. And, and I will say this, for the outer build quality of the device, Oh, and again, there's no fans, uh, just two feet across the bottom. There's no fans, no vents, no ports, none of that stuff. So very clean looking. Um, but um, the overall just build of this device and the kind of the inspired feel of the design uh, really just makes you uh, enjoy using the device. And so some of the flaws that we'll talk about in a few minutes uh, kind of get overlooked a little bit because the device just feels and looks so good. Once we pop the lid open, uh, we're met with this gorgeous display. I want to say a few notes on it really quickly. It is a 3200 by 1800 display. Um, and so if you do some quick math and divide those two in half, you get 1600 by 900. That's exactly the way this Chromebook actually renders uh, objects on the screen. So text, um, icons, all that kind of stuff. If you put it up next to a 1600 by 1900, uh, or 1600 by 900, uh, 16 by nine uh, aspect ratioed monitor, the, the stuff on the screen would actually look the same size. Now this is going to be twice as sharp in both directions. So um, the reason I point that out is I've long said that probably 1600 by 900 is a better optimal um, uh, aspect ratio when it comes to a 13.3 inch device uh, because 1080p makes everything really tiny and then you try to do some scaling and certain things work in scaling and certain things don't. So the minute you take a 1080p 13.3 inch device and set it on a stand or get it you know away from you in your lap it, it starts to make you kind of squint and for those uh, that want to know i do have i have 20 20 vision um, so uh, i don't wear glasses or anything like that so if i'm having to squint that means that most people would as well so um, that that to me has always been a little off-putting so 1600 by 900 just makes sense and it really does it, it makes the most of this display uh, everything feels the right size everything's in the right place uh, it just it just feels good at a little bit of a distance or right up in your lap everything feels great um, and so kudos to HP for really nailing this uh, this is probably one of my favorite parts of this it's the first 13 inch 
16 by 9 uh, device because the Pixel is close to 13 inch, but it's a 3 by 2. And so you get more of a square display and it doesn't feel as cramped. But uh, the Dell Chromebook, the Toshiba, all of those, for some reason, that, that 13.3 inches uh, in that in, in, uh, 1080p display always just uh, didn't work for me. And so this, this is great. You get these beautiful viewing angles, as you can see, as we move this thing on angle and off angle, both side to side. Uh, wide viewing angles, really great colors, uh, just a beautiful display, crazy sharp, just about as bright as the Chromebook Pixel. I want to say the Chromebook Pixel comes in at 400 nits. This one's in the 360 or 350 range, which is plenty bright. You're not going to run into a situation where you can't see the see the display. So that's that's very encouraging. Had some comments about the plastic around the bezel, um, and and honestly, that's not been an issue. Um, I know that glass all the way to the edges uh, gives a better premium feel. I agree with that completely. But this plastic, for whatever reason, didn't bother me. It's not that cheap plastic. It actually has a pretty decent feel to it. Same stuff that's on the bottom. Um, doesn't attract too many fingerprints and um, really uh, it just hasn't bothered me at all with this device. And so I've been really pleased with the display. There is like if you come off angle and then you're looking from the top. So the, the angle I'm looking at it right now and kind of you guys would be looking at it you're going to see a little bit of washed out uh, colors and that is just part of an IPS display there's um, a class of IPS display that's a little better than this so what you would see on an iPad or the Chromebook Pixel or uh, MacBook Retina uh, screens uh, those don't have that issue so HP had to cut some cost in some places that's just kind of understandable the keyboard uh, is fantastic uh, for, a, for a device this thin uh, it really impressed me it's got six stages of backlight if you count the off position um, the the keys have a slight texture to them. I just I really enjoyed typing on this keyboard. Um, I, I like the travel, the clickiness of the keys. Everything felt great. It was responsive. I was able to type fast on it. Can't say enough. I love this keyboard, and in this thin form factor, that was pretty impressive uh, for them to get that kind of travel built into here. Right above the keyboard, we have the uh, Bang and Olufsen Audio uh, branded cool speaker grill here so these are machined holes up in the top and these, these are just really nice design aspects um, it's 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 a really neat look it's really interesting um, and with the branding and all the kind of talk about Bang & Olufsen Audio I was kind of expecting uh, something really amazing uh, and, and got something that sounds pretty average for uh, laptop speakers so don't go uh, throwing out your Bluetooth speakers or anything thing like that this is not going to replace them but it is very good the audio sounds good and crisp the highs are really nice and there's a, it's a good round sound it's just not very loud and there's no uh, bass to be uh, uh, talked about here but that's normal for laptop speakers we're not dealing with a whole lot of space here for anything to resonate even if the speakers are that good so uh, don't set your expectations out of the park I kind of did a little bit because I saw all this that went into putting these speakers in here and kind of made some assumptions that hey they're really going to push the audio here and it's you know it's good it's not amazing it's not going to change the way you think about laptop speakers in any way shape or form and then below that we have a trackpad I don't believe it's glass it's kind of hard to tell sometimes but I don't think it is uh, more than likely some sort of aluminum uh, the, the surface is really good it glides very nicely all the gestures work just fine all that stuff's great uh, the size of it's about the same size as the Dell Chromebook 13, um, so it's plenty wide, not real deep, but plenty wide, and, and it gets the job done. However, uh, the, the the travel on the trackpad um, is a little deep for my taste, and if you put light touches on there, um, you can kind of feel it give just a little bit underneath that before you actually get to the click. And so, uh, to me, that's kind of a knock because when we're talking about premium builds. You know the trackpad being good is one of those things that's pretty important and so everything about the trackpad works just fine don't let that be a, a deterrent to say don't buy this and it could have just been mine um, but that shows me that there's a little room for improvement for kind of cleaning that area of this device up but overall it didn't impact or make uh, the overall experience worse in using this device at all what's inside this guy um, it comes in multiple configurations actually um, there are uh, four basic ones and HP has a, a site where you can configure uh, the device but ultimately um, it ends up being pretty much the same four um, all of them from what we can see right now on HP's website even though all of them other than the uh, Pentium at this point in time are sold out all of them come with the 3200 by 1800 IPS so the display goes across the gamut um, where you start changing is the processor obviously these are all Skylake processors we have the Pentium, Pentium 4405Y um, the uh, 
the M3, the M5, and the M7. And a quick note about the Core M processors. So last year Core M came out um, and everybody thought, hey, this, this is gonna be a pretty decent processor. It kind of only went in the MacBook and a handful of other Windows PCs and didn't perform very well. Uh, and the selling point was, hey, it's got great battery and it doesn't need fans. But without performance that was adequate, the chip price was pretty high. And so it kind of created this conundrum for manufacturers. Fast forward to this year, the Core M line has come out now, and just like the Core I line, we have the M3, the M5, the M7 that each kind of get more specced out as you move up the, the ladder there. And so the Pentium kind of is in the same place with the Core I. You've got the, the Celeron uh, uh, processor, so the Pentium kind of fits in that with the Core M. And so uh, this year, I can't speak for Windows and I can't speak for Mac OS. Uh, I've seen some stuff saying that the, the performance has improved. Um, but now let me tell you something, Core M in Chromebooks is legitimate. Um, this device is the Core M5 with 8 gigs of RAM and its benchmarks, the Octane benchmarks, were off the charts. It was, it would regularly get 29,000, sometimes 27, 28,000, but somewhere in that range. And just for reference, the Chromebook Pixel that I have, the LS, the i7 in it, gets 27,000 on a good day. And so if I logged out and got everything closed down and, and ran it clean, I was getting 29,000 out of this thing. And so that is really, really impressive. Um, the device never lagged. It didn't have a problem keeping up with anything I normally do. And my expectations are high a lot of times. You know, I come in going, hey, I know what a Pixel can do. I know what my, my beefed out Chromebox can do. And so I want to see these devices kind of live up to that. And so I, I didn't know what to expect with the Core M because I hadn't, we haven't seen them in a Chromebook until this point. And so, um, very, very impressed with the internals. And so back to um, what's inside these guys. So we have the, the Pentium, the M3, M5, M7. The device we have here is the, uh, core, or the, uh, the core M5 with eight gigs of RAM. The Pentium and the M3 come with four gigs of RAM. This one comes with eight. And at least out of the gate, um, I'm not sure. I haven't seen a whole lot of the M7s out there. They were, they were pairing it with 16 gigs of RAM. Price point start at $499, which is what they're advertising, saying, hey, you can get this awesome build for $499. That is with four gigs of RAM and the Pentium. Um, hopefully, we'll get that one in to kind of take a look at it to see how it performs. Because if it even performs decently and has this kind of build quality, then $499 is going to be an amazing price for that device. Um, then you move to $599 for the M3 with four gigs. Then you move to $819 for this device, five gigs, or five, M5, sorry, with eight gigs of RAM. And then you move on to uh, $1,021. These are some random pricings for the M7 with 16 gigs. All of them come equipped, equipped with 32 gig eMMC storage. That is a little bit slower than SSD storage, but it, it, I didn't notice any of it uh, as I was working on this device. I had no issues with that. And so, uh, able to install uh, Crouton because these are Intel chips, right? So Crouton, everything worked. The only thing I saw was that running Steam um, in, in the uh, uh, Ubuntu environment, um, I was running into some serious issues with games. Um, and my guess is that Steam or Ubuntu or something, I don't know, isn't optimized yet to use the GPU and CPU that is the Core M line. So uh, because it wasn't just a little bit less or something like that, it was like, oh man, this isn't optimal. It was absolutely terrible, completely almost unusable. So uh, opening source games, which can run on almost anything, they don't take a whole lot of uh, grit to run. Um, I was getting like two frames per second. <laughs> it was it was really bad, and so my guess is they'll they'll fix that, and uh, eventually the, those things will run just fine. And obviously, Android apps are going to run like a breeze on this thing. So wrapping up, uh, what are the good things? Build quality, speed, very surprising speed, um, overall look and feel. Um, this thing is going to be a head turner. You take it to the coffee shop or whatever, it just looks good. It feels good. When you hold it, it, it just inspires some confidence. It's a great device uh, from that perspective. What's bad? Um, the uh, soldered on uh, EMMC storage, um, there's not going to be any upgrading of that. The mouse uh, or uh, trackpad being a little bit floppy, it was, it was kind of a bummer. Um, but overall, there's not a whole lot of bad going on here. Um, lack of touchscreen, I guess you could say, would be a negative. But ultimately, this device is really good, and HP, I think, has delivered something pretty phenomenal at the price points, especially if that Pentium device can really deliver from a, a usage standpoint um, as far as speeds and usability. And, and from what I've seen of the Celeron when it comes with the Core i line, 
I, I would not be surprised if this thing really does deliver well uh, in the Pentium layout. And hopefully, like I said, we'll get one of those in. If I do, I'll do a quick uh, kind of follow-up review to this video to say, hey, yeah, guys, the Pentium's pretty awesome. And at $499, to get a device with that kind of display, keyboard, trackpad, build, and just all those things built in, if, if the Pentium can you know, kind of just hold its own, uh, that will be absolutely the go-to Chromebook if you've got around 500 bucks to spend on one. But guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, for you who are subscribers, thanks for sticking around and, and, and watching the videos. If you're not a subscriber yet and you want to kind of be alerted when we put a new video up, right beneath the video there's a subscribe button. Just click that. You'll get alerted to new videos when they come out um, and all the latest things. You can also go to chromeunbox.com and we have all these reviews posted there plus all kinds of Chrome news and, and things that are going on in the Chrome OS uh, community. And additionally, if you would give the video a thumbs up, that helps us out a whole lot um, to, to keep getting more viewers and more subscribers and more community and comments and all that stuff. And speaking of comments, leave those in the, in the comment section below or at Chrome Unboxed or on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Google+. Plus. Uh, at Chrome Unboxed on all of those. Um, find us on there. Follow us on there. Let's talk uh, all things Chrome OS and Chromebooks. And until then, guys, thanks for watching again. We'll see you.